My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today this is the second part of the explaining turbos video thing and today we're talking about turbines so I did the impeller one because there is a lot more involved um, with the impeller side of things it's easier to explain it with the impeller than it is the turbine so in a future video, uh, in a future video, in a previous video I said this and it's very hot, you'll know if you've ever touched an exhaust pipe so the turbine is exactly, well it's not exactly, but it's like turbines you get at a power station a turbine extracts the heat energy that is in the exhaust flow, it's not how much pressure it has and speed people who write that are fucking idiots it extracts the heat energy from the flow of the exhaust system and turns it into mechanical motion So yes, and people called me up on it saying, what do you mean it's nothing to do with flow, it's all to do with heat, you fucking retard, and so on and so on. Yes, alright, fair enough, I do get where, um, where people got the confusion with that. In engineering terms, we talk about engines, and a petrol engine is a heat engine. Now, you could straight away argue and say, well no, it's a pressure engine, you idiot, it uses pressure to uh, extract energy and force, and then talk and blah 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 but in engineering when we trace things and physics when we trace things back to their uh, their initial source if you have a cold engine then nothing is going to happen the initial energy the source of energy is heat is through combustion so we call it a heat engine and when I was talking about this guy was I was answering very quickly as you can see in the video it's a very quick blurb about this guy who said oh it's not it's the piston pushing the exhaust gases out of the cylinder and that force from the piston is what pushes the turbine. No, that is complete fucking trap, that's rubbish. The um, exhaust gas itself has more pressure than the piston pushing on it. Not that it could ever have that, but you'd have to have the piston come up and compress that exhaust gas and then open the exhaust valve to build such a big pressure that it would push past the uh, turbine and give you a choochy spinny spinny. So, I was basically pointing out when you look at the core, the root of how turbines work, it is heat. That is where they get their energy from and so on and so forth. But I can kind of see where the complication is. Maybe that's a bit too deep for people and that's a bit too physic -y for you know, it's all about physics and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to talk about the turbine and because you've probably, hopefully, seen the impeller video, a lot of this is going to make sense. We have the same involute shape, we have blades, everything just works in a slight different way. Right, so uh, buh, buh, buh. let me get myself organised and we'll crack on with this. Right then, so the reverse, it, it basically a, a turbine is, is the reverse of an impeller. Um, we are trying to extract energy from the air and turn it into mechanical rotation where the impeller has mechanical rotation and it's imparting that energy to the air. So basically what we're doing here is, I've got two pictures here, we've got the um, actual cross-sectional jobby and then we've got the blade itself. So what happens is, is that the difference is where your inlets and outlets are. So for a turbo, this is the out, the reverse of an impeller, and this is the in. And as you can see straight away, again, we've got that, this deflection. We've got a vector of the exhaust gases coming in, and then they come out 90 degrees, pretty much, to the way that they were going. And again, that's how we do the whole thing. So the exhaust gases come in from like this, so from your perspective, in like that and it's just like a ski ramp, they go up like this and this just directs this way and when they come in they hit here and they end up crashing in and get a vector change just like that. Now, with all forces being equal and blah 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 because we are pushing this way or basically against the blades because we've got a deflection this way the, the impeller, uh, turbine sorry the 
the turbine turns that way. So we get a rotation. Just like with our impeller where we spin it and we clap it into the air and it just gives it a deflection like that. This is how it works. Now, when we look at the um, uh, cross-sectional area, we are coming in quite fine as a nozzle and then we are opening up. And the reason why we open up is because uh, one, because the shape dictates it, there's nothing really we can do with that. And that is one of the problems actually with car turbines. If you look at turbines on fighter aircraft and all the rest of it, it is just a solid ring where basically it's the actual profile of the blades. And the profile of the blades on um, these kind of things are this shape. And what they are trying to do is they are trying to create a nozzle uh, because your other blade here means that the in going in gets smaller and it's creating a nozzle, which is what we'd love to do with impeller, um, with turbines for cars, but uh, alas, because of the shape, we've basically got, we've got to stick with what we've got. So what they do try and do is they try, like they do with impellers, is they try and stick closer blades together and all the rest of it, and just make sure your cross-sectional shape is as small as you can get. However, because we do have a circle, and I'll do that, because we have a circle, like so, because we're coming in here, and this is a, such a large cross-sectional area, and because this is a smaller one, we are, in effect, creating a nozzle, but we are fighting against this involute shape where we're starting off small and going big, which is a diffuser. So these are optimum, and this is the reason why centrifugal turbines and impellers like this were used in the original jet engines, Frank Whittle's jet engines and all the rest of it, but then they were then terminated because the engineers realised there was a better way to do it. So then it begs the question, well, if we know we have turbines in power stations and in jet engines that are a hell of a lot more efficient than the turbine in a turbo, why do we still use turbines in turbos? It's all got to do with cost and size, but mainly size. If you were to create a big ring with blades, just like in a fighter aircraft or something like that. There's two problems with this. One, this thing's fucking huge. It's massive. And our impeller works quite well. The actual impeller side of things. But you could have you could have an impeller you could have an impeller on the top like so with your blades. And then you could have a shaft and then you could have this whacking great big thing with blades on like this for the exhaust. It'd be good for heat dispersion actually because it'd have to heat up this entire thing but it'd be big, it'd be heavy and the other thing is as well is how then you'd have to separate the flow. We have just say in a four cylinder you have four small exhaust ports like this and then you would have to convert them small ports to a very thin ring. Uh, so your manifold would have to have a long transition going from four holes to a big thin ring you know, your exhaust manifolds would be massive, you lost a lot of energy because of the heat that you've lost, and so on and so forth, and it just wouldn't fit into your bonnet and you wouldn't want to do it. So even though the turbine side of a turbo is not ideal, we're pretty much stuck with it because it is nice and compact, and it works to a certain degree, but there are a hell of a lot more efficient turbines out there. And people seem to think that they spend, that manufacturers spend a lot of time improving the impeller, that's absolute rubbish. It's actually the turbine they're trying to improve. They're, there's a lot of work involved in trying to incre increase its operational temperatures by using sexy nickel alloys, which is what the turbine is the biggest cost of a, um, a turbo. So if you go and buy a turbo from Honeywell or something like that, and it costs you like fucking hell, a thousand pounds for a turbo, most of that cost, about eight percent of that cost, is in that impeller. Yes, uh, in the turbine. Yes, the impeller has CNC cut and all the rest of it, but that's piss easy. You just load it in and away it goes. Designing the profile is hard. It's something I used to do. But the turbine wheel itself, um, it's a lot of manufacturing costs and stuff because they use sexy nickel alloys and what have you. So, now that we've kind of gone over that very, very briefly, um, one of the things I want to talk about is the whole way that turbines work in general. So what they want to do is, and this is the important thing, and this goes back to when I made that quote, that a turbine requires heat. It's not really that bothered about everything else. It's because if you heat up a floor, if you have a pipe like so, 
and you have flow going down it, and you have flow going down it, and you have flow going down it. And just see if we record the speed of this flow. But before we do that, we take the temperature. And the temperature T1 here would be just, let's just say it's 30 degrees. And then let's just say T2 here is 100 degrees. And let's just say it remains 100 degrees all the way through it. So here, obviously, we have some kind of fucking heat source. You know. What we'll notice is that our speed, our velocity, will increase. So we'll say 10 meters per second here, and then we'll say 25 meters per second here. I don't know why I put that extra slash in like an idiot. And then it would remain 25 meters per second, but as it starts to cool down, it will slow down. So we have to take into consideration that as it carries on travelling down the pipe, it's going to cool down. So we'll call this 80 degrees here, and then you'll see you've got 23 metres per second here. So as you can see, and you can, you can look this up, people don't seem to believe this for some reason, if you heat up a gas, it will accelerate. So a good example of that is a torch. So this has a pressure in this torch, and as you can see, that is accelerating. You know, this is how rockets work. If you think that combustion doesn't cause acceleration, and combustion, it's not the fact that a chemical reaction is happened, it's the energy released. It's so, if we increase the temperature of a gas flowing down a pipe, its, its speed will increase. Not only will its speed increase, but as we know from gases, that if you accelerate a gas, its pressure will drop. When you slow, when you cool things down, it slows things down. Chemical reaction, reactions happen slower. You know, if you heat stuff up, chemical reactions happen faster because there is more energy in the system. So the same thing happens with a turbo. This is why turbos are fitted as close to the exhaust manifold. Now I've had some comments from, um, I think it was the electric supercharger video or something else, or maybe it was the Volvo supercharger video. People saying, no, 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 they put turbos uh, just close to the engine because of and blah, 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 blah. Look, it's like this. If it was just about the pressure or the flow, you would have your exhaust snake around for ages because the pressure would remain the same and you'd let the exhaust cool down and then you wouldn't make turbos out of turbines out of really expensive super nickel alloys and stuff like that to take the heat. Why would you give it that punishment? You could let the exhaust gas cool down and then stick it through the turbo. Yes, you'd have loads of lag, but even in industrial applications where they have turbos, where speed isn't the thing, it's actually about the horsepower, just say like earth movers and stuff like that, they're not bothered about the lag, you know what I mean? And the lag wouldn't be that much, just let the air cool down and you'd actually have actually a, a smoother turbo, a smoother boost if you did that. Yes, it'd take a bit to pick up, a couple of seconds. The reason why we stick the... Um, and some fucking idiot said, Oh, well, that's bullshit, because they put, they put turbos in the back of Porsches. Because the engine's in the back, you melon. You know, yeah. But anyway, uh, exhaust wrap, heat shielding. Now, people have said, Oh, no, heat shielding is to reduce underbonnet temperatures, which is very true, that is one of the reasons, but like with everything in engineering, there is, in engineering, there isn't just one reason to do one thing, there's actually multiple reasons, and it's all compromises and what have you. So the fact of the matter is, is that turbos require heat. Hotter you can have a turbo, it's not the heat that makes it work, it's not, oh, if you just heat up a, you know, if you put a, a turbo in a fire, it's not going to start whizzing around. But it's all to do with the gas, the gas temperature. The hotter the gas temperature, the more energy that the gas has, so the more energy you can extract from that gas with your turbine. So I hope that all makes sense, and I will do even more videos on this if people require it, if there's more questions and what have you, and I'll see you in a bit.